in America, I feel safe. But I don't still feel 100% safe because uh, the government in my country has more opportunities to look for me everywhere. So um, I think uh, putting my face on TV is a little bit dangerous for me, especially because the government is hunting for people like me. The largest concentration of torture survivors live right here in the greater Los Angeles area, tens of thousands of people. They are people we see every day, but we don't know that they are torture survivors. It could be the person who pumps gas in your car, it could be your doctor, it could be people who you just pass on the street, people who live with stories that are horrific, that are painful, and who seek help from PTV. I took uh, my, my son to, to the clinic and I was talking to one of the doctors and I think she noticed something about me that wasn't right. And she said, uh, first she asked me, uh, Mario, where are you from? I said, I'm from El Salvador. And she said, uh, how long have you been here? I said, I haven't been here that long. Um, did you go through the war? And I said, yeah, I did. And she said, you know, I have a friend that might help you. You know, and I said, help me in what? <laughs> I decided to come to uh, PTV after an incident that I had at my job, you know, because that incident brought flashbacks. And I came and, you know, I was scared because I didn't want nobody to know, you know, things that I, I only knew. I came with that idea, you know, why should I go to that place? Uh, who's going to see my file? You know, yeah, I mean, who are you? I mean, you know, I was, I was really scared. I didn't want nobody to know about me. Yes, uh, I had some worries, actually. When I came here, I had some worries about the uh, PTV because uh, at the beginning, uh, I wasn't feeling comfortable telling my story to anyone else. I didn't just feel as like telling everyone about what happened to me. Many times when people come and see us, um, they're very fearful. They don't know what to expect. They don't know who we are. They don't really know if we have any kind of agenda or anything that they need to worry about. So it's really important to make that clear from the beginning that we are not working for the government or any government or have any political agenda or any religious agenda. We don't work for the lawyers if they happen to be in asylum process. We work for them. It was clear from the beginning that the person need a multi-professional approach. And then from the first day we began thinking that they need a complete psychological evaluation, a complete medical evaluation, and we need the help of case manager and other professionals. One of the most terrible effects of torture is the way that it breaks down one's sense of self and one's, one's identity. Um, so for them, to, for instance, to, to go right directly to the story the way things happened from their point of view um, and repeat exactly what happened can often be harmful. When, they, when the therapist and myself ask them to speak about the details of it, it's usually the first time that they've done it, almost ever. And so sometimes it just and for their own process of healing, it's difficult for them to, to get to the point where they can speak about it. Somebody like me, I came here, I didn't have anybody. I didn't have any relative here. And uh, it's, not, it's not that easy to live from a third world country, come to a first world country without knowing any, anybody and try to make it. They're in a country they don't know. They're separated from their families. They're very often sleeping in someone else's uh, living room on the floor. Um, they can't work because they have no source of income. And many of them go through this year after year. When I came here, I met Naomi. She was the first person I saw. And, uh, she explained to me the way they, they work and everything, and uh, she told me she would be happy to help me. I think the most important thing about the case manager, what makes it different from the other roles at PTV, is that I don't need to know exactly what happened to them. It's really not important for me to know exactly the details of what happened to them. I'm dealing with the here and now, what's going on in the life right now, and what's going to happen in the future. And I think that's comforting in a way, that they don't have to get into details, that there's someone they can call or come and see when they have something going on in the present. If I sense that there's, there's been a lot of trauma and there's a, 
you know, and I'm just out of respect for who they are. I do not assume that they understand the whole process of therapy and, and the evaluation. Um, I'll be very open about um, what I do. Um, I'll be very deferential. Actually, in my country, uh, I never knew much about therapy. I didn't know it's helpful. I mean, at all, I didn't know it's helpful because in my country, it's maybe for very rich people, rich and famous people. For instance, I'll even ask them, are, are you more comfortable with the door open or the door closed? Even though in, in our culture, the idea of doing therapy with a door partially open, I mean, therapists would say you can't do that. But, but for just to be sensitive to what their experience has been, particularly if they've been locked up in an enclosed space or interrogated in an enclosed space. At the beginning, there were some things that I, I couldn't share with anybody. I thought they were personal, like, uh, for example, the scars that I had on my body. I couldn't tell anybody about them because I thought this, that's my body. I didn't want anybody to know what is uh, wrong with my body. Um, but uh, through the therapies, I, have to, I came to understand that I have to show, I have to show this to prove that it was, it was real, what happened to me was real. And so their willingness to show you their scars, not like a badge of honor, but almost as a part of the catharsis to say, you actually believe that what I've been through and for the first time I can talk about it and this is proof of what it is, stuff that I've kept hidden inside and haven't spoken to anybody about. This is physical proof. You can see for yourself what I've been through. They helped me gather all the evidence in my case, like all the scars I had on me. They had to explain it to me that it was important for me to show it, which they took photographs of it and take it to the court with me. One of the more important things I think that I do uh, with clients is prepare them for the whole experience of being in court. Uh, because for many of them, uh, it's extremely intimidating and frightening. Because not only do they are there armed guards there at the doorway, but basically they're going into a situation where there's a there's a judge um, who's who's basically going to determine what the rest of their life looks like. The most potent healing factor is the is to give the torture survivor safe harbor. Once people feel that they're safe that the long arm of their repressive government can't reach out and grab them again, can't inflict harm and pain and suffering, the healing starts. I work both as an artist, as a theater person, and also as a psychotherapist. I was trained in psychoanalysis in Colombia. And I have seen more and more the power of aesthetics and beauty as the path to the heart. Then when Hector came in, as he kind of transformed the, the healing club because he likes to tell stories and, and from the stories uh, he will find a way that having clients participating and he likes to do role play in, in little drama, the uh, little theater that is improvised but it was a, a theme. You sit! Stop. Stop. Zoom! Sit! Stop! Zoom! Stop! Stop. Everybody! I learn a lot from children. And when you see children, they don't look at each other, where are you from, what color your skin is, how old you are. They just, can you play with me? Uh, there is an African saying that the blessing is next to the wound. And, and that has been my experience when I work with people who had gone through very traumatic events. And it's, uh, it's building community, it's building um, a friendship, and, and also is uh, taking the, uh, the survivors out of their isolation and sharing. The, 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 they know that there are many others that have been tortured. They all know that coming here gives that a sense of companionship, of uh, identifying with each other, even if they come from very much different cultures and countries. And when I come here, you know, I meet people that's been through the same thing I've been through. You know, it's amazing that somebody from, from Eritrea can relate, you know, to the things that happened in El Salvador. It's more about letting the newcomers in PTV know that it's real. 
PTV is important. PTV can help. And it's healing because uh, we ended up laughing and playing and, and, and sharing nice stories and so on. I just want them to know that somebody like me, when I first came to PTV, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't laugh. It's funny. I couldn't laugh when I came to a PTV. I was crying. It's become really important. It's when we get together, as many of us as possible, and just spend good, good time together. See one more sport person. Go single. Yeah. It's interesting to note that most of the staff themselves are either refugees or the children of refugees or immigrants. I have a suspicion that this is probably why we were attracted to this work. Uh, although I think that the core reason really is feelings of sympathy, feelings of empathy, feelings that we can make this world a better place. It's not like I have any f really formal training in dealing with torture survivors, who does? But um, I think a lot is my own personal background. My parents were refugees and so I grew up in a refugee family and obviously was deeply affected by that. Uh, well, I was uh, tortured in Colombia in, when I was 22 years old, and uh, the only reason they didn't kill me, as they did many people that were captured before me and people that were captured after me, is that during that week that I was in the chamber of, of torture, uh, we had international delegates visiting Colombia to see the, the chains of power. We were du it was during election week. So since we have international delegates, the government said, we don't have torture here. So they use a lot of the techniques where they don't leave your burns and, and broken ribs and things like that. Uh, so after that, this experience have had different meanings in my life. It has re-signified as I grow and as I revisit that moment uh, through therapy, through healing, through art. For me to do this work is very important because I'm itself a refugee from Chile. And there we have the experience of to see also and treat some victim of torture. And I'm itself a survivor of an episode where most of the people was killed. You know, the goal of PTV is to transform the victim into a survivor. Oftentimes, our survivors go on and with the feeling that they themselves want to give back to society, that they have a special understanding of the vulnerability and the fragility of goodness. And sometimes survivors make their professional choices based on really the experiences they have had as torture victims. For me, the most hopeful thing right now is to be doing this work, is to, to now be working with people who had just been tortured, who feel their life is over, who, who are so wounded, they are depressed, they don't have a voice, uh, they don't see any light. And, and then you share with them your own process. And they say, wow, is that possible? And then you connect them with resources like PTV. At the beginning of this, uh, I couldn't stand in front of uh, people like this and say I was tortured. But today I'm able to share my story that I was tortured. And uh, it's, ju it's the reality. I went through some hard times in my life, which it taught me a very a great lesson. Um, but I mean, the problems are finished. I'm not going to stay there every day and cry. I have to go ahead with my life, look for a job, and try to build up a new life. The Civil War, you know, killed my childhood. And with that, you know, my trust, you know, for the world. But thanks to uh, PTV, I could say that, you know, I've gained, you know, at least a little, you know, a little bit of trust.